This is Mr. Jim Canning, Pennsylvania Patriots. From Athens, Pennsylvania, which is kind of fitting if you all ever know about the Battle of Athens, Tennessee, well, we're, we are here to tell the American people that we are rising up and we are meeting with fellow law enforcement officers and military and we have had enough. Is an American, he wasn't. No. Look, you know what, I never got onto the birther thing because at first, they had me sold. At first, they had me sold. They did. They had me sold with the fact that the president was, uh, all this birther stuff was just an attack against him. And, you know, I, I, I fit into it. I said, you know what? And, and people would, when, when I started having problems with his policies and I started speaking out against him, the first thing that people would want to do is stick a mic in front of my face and say, do you believe that he's a U.S. citizen? Do you believe he's a, see, the, the, the idea of the socialists when they, when they do this is, is they, they take our argument from us and, and then they slam it back in our face and make it look stupid. Well, that's the real argument yeah. to be had. And in, in my opinion, it's the real argument to be had. Just if, here's the here's the problem. Okay, there's a problem. Just produce it. Produce the well, produce the thing. Produce the birth certificate. Wait, that you know that that is a problem. But the thing is, that's not the main issue. In no. his in his own book, he he, he admits that he was uh, adopted by his stepfather, yeah. and he was an Indonesian oh, citizen. You heard of the evidence that's in now, right? They got the records from Occidental College. That was oh. what the reporter got killed over. Oh, they right. got the records. He was, he's, he was, his name was Barry Satoru. His yeah. name well, never was changed to Barack Obama. Never. Legally, legally, he's an imposter. Well, uh, if you, yeah, uh, in what I wrote, you know, a week ago, mm -hmm. I, I touched on that. I said, you know, he was, he admitted he, he was legally adopted by his stepfather. He was legally, legally an Indonesian yes. uh, citizen. And his name was Did, never changed back to Obama. Nope. He uh, changed when, it back. He changed it back. It's in his own book. He in, changed it. When he was in Occidental College. Correct. He changed it back. Correct. Without any legal authority. No legal authority. And, uh, you know, so... He just thumbs his nose at the law anytime he wants. My own opinion he, is he was a Rockefeller from age 19 or anyway. <laughs> well, he... he, he Rockefeller uh, plan. Without a legal name change, he decided to change his name from Barry to Barack. Uh, also, Barry Satoro. Barry Satoro. But when he came back into the United States, being an Indonesian citizen, he should have gone through immigration and become a naturalized citizen. Yeah. That, that was never done. Yeah. And if it had been done, like he, everybody still, else. he still wouldn't be eligible. And he still wouldn't be eligible. Correct. That's right. So, you know, uh, he, he's a fraud. He's using false identity. He's an imposter. Uh, he's an illegal immigrant. He needs to be deported. He needs to be charged. I have a theory about why they brought him up the way they did. My theory is this. A lot of U.S. presidents haven't, haven't had to provide their birth certificate because everybody knew where they were born and where they were from. It was never challenged. Yes. A lot of them. Yeah. But when you have a requirement and when the people, even if they're the Republican people and you're the Democrat in, in charge or, or vice versa, well, if the people are asking for it and it, the law is that you must require it, that you must have it, Look at the, uh, you know, uh, I, I'm no fan of uh, uh, McCain either. But look, no. at the, look, but look at the hassle That's McCain socialist. had. Socialist. Uh, yeah, look at the hassle McCain had to go through to show his uh, prove his citizenship. Yeah. Because he was born on a U.S. military base. Yes, because he was born on the U.S. and that that shouldn't have even been an issue. Nope. Any American child born on an American base to American parents that are serving that's that's an assault against veterans right. everywhere. But he had but to, McCain, that's a whole nother issue. Yeah, but that's a, we we I've but, talked to I, I've personally spoken to vets that were in that prison camp when he came in the admiral's boy when he came in and unless these men they don't have anything to gain they're not making any money of this they don't have websites they're not selling t-shirts they're angry and wouldn't they be happy if one of their brothers was the president? And yeah. They're angry. There's a reason, and I wanted to get yeah. to the bottom of that reason, and I found out what the bottom of that reason was. Found out he went into there and he started singing like a songbird for the commies because. And if you look at the pictures, if everybody just uses their intelligence, he was a he was treated horribly by the VC, and he was dragged into the prison camp. And we hear all these horrible stories. He's laying there in a the bed. The pictures of him in white, pristine white sheets, arms bandaged up, with a cigarette in his mouth. I don't know about you, man, but I know a lot of veterans that that were POWs and that lost even more. 
-hmm. and the ones that that were treated well sung and and if they were if it was torture that made him sing my heart goes out to him yeah. and you know what everybody's got their breaking point exactly. but from what these gentlemen said from the minute he was brought into that camp they couldn't believe it broke their hearts that they heard oh no not 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 johnny not the admiral's boy not saying that on so he, they've been trying to hide that for a long time mm -hmm. but they're not they can't hide that from me see i i I know these people. I went to military academy. The mindset's like McCain. I saw a million McCains in the military academy I went to. Rich kids' sons, rich generals' sons, rich admirals' sons. And they believe, they live an entirely different life than, than everyone else leads. I'm going to really, you know, expose myself out there. My father being a judge. I lived a different life for a while until I departed from it. I lived a different life. I had privileges that I shouldn't have had. But instead of continuing a life of, of utilizing those privileges, I'm now trying to expose the fact that we have a, a de facto class monarchy. Yeah. We have, and, and, we have and a it, class system in this country. Yes, and it, well, the class system isn't even as bad as the elite class, because that elite's class, it says no titles of nobility shall be made. We already have one at our at our more working class level with the attorney, mm -hmm. uh, Esquire. I, it says in the Constitution, no no. No titles. No, no titles of no, nobility, no, no nobility shall be made. And and if you look at the definition of Esquire, it says the first couple lines, a title of nobility. Now, that laid, led me to doing some digging. My father being an attorney and a judge, my brother being an attorney and a judge, and led me to do some digging. And, and I, find, I found uh, documentation that supports the fact that attorneys weren't even allowed in the courtroom in the Founding Fathers' days. Not, not to argue a case. Not that they weren't allowed in the courtroom. They, weren't, they didn't, couldn't come in for somebody else and argue their case. Right. They could help them they to, they prepare advising. their own case. Right. right. And for the most part, the common man could come into court and speak his mind and the judge would ask questions and then he would come to a verdict, the jury trial, there would be a jury of their peers. It was a fair system. It really was. But once the lawyers and the socialists got a hold, I don't know if you know about the American Lawyers Guild being created by socialists and I, the American Bar Association, I believe too, don't have proof on that, but I'm, I'm researching it. I believe it was. They subverted, and they've been attacking the Constitution since the beginning. Thomas Jefferson said so when he came out. I brought you a republic if you can keep it. Well, they have been attacking the law to make themselves more and more and more and more required. It's the same thing of mm -hmm. any other industry where you give an industry control over a people that they get to dictate terms. They're going to need themselves into existence. Well, yeah. that's what attorneys have done. They've needed themselves our into existence. Our government does the same thing. And look how this government has grown from a, what's supposed to be a small government now to an you know, everlasting, overgrown beast that you know, just uh, needs more and more. So where do we go from here? Where do we go? You're a lawman. I'm a former firefighter. I'm, I'm an oath keeper. Uh, uh, You're an oath keeper. What do we do uh, from I here? I prefer to view myself as a military man. Mm -hmm. uh, where we need to go, we need to take control of the country first of all we need to restore you know honor pride uh, a national sense of pride uh, we need to you know really get rid of some of these socialist programs we have 50 percent of our population now receiving social benefit programs of one I type know. or another I know. Uh, you know back when I was a young man uh, you know I was t taught to uh, earn what you what you had. Well, they've made it so that people ha almost well, have to take it. I mean, that they've well, collapsed the... This the government has been openly telling people, advising people to get on welfare, to get on food stamps, telling people how to do it. And now... Free phones! Get, yeah, welfare phones! Yeah, now you have so many people on welfare, and what are they doing? Oh, well, we've, we've got to make cuts. And there's more cuts coming. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, this, you vote for us. We'll give you, give you, give you, and then once you give us... Yeah. I told them that. I told him. I, I've been saying the same thing for I told years. Him. Yeah, uh, and, and and here's how socialism works, especially with the voting. You have a, a group of people. You provide them with uh, social benefits. They know that hey, you know, they keep voting in the same the people that will promise to hey, you know, what, you get free food, free medical, free housing. You know, you just got to keep voting for me. I think we made After, a mistake at, with the vote. 
Oh, we, we have. I'm going to get into that in a second. So now you have a, a population where they know that all they have to do is voting these people that give them the free stuff. And at that point, uh, democracy doesn't work. The republic doesn't work because they know that they can just vote in wh who they want for what they want. And it's no longer the best interest of the country. I think vote... So you were saying um, about saying, the voting. Okay, wh what needs to be done with the voting, and I'm a f firm believer in this, is there should be some type of civics test, even if it's just a few questions, right. so that people, so, so that we know that the people have an understanding, even a basic understanding, of what the issues are, who's voting, or you know, who, who's running. Uh, there are so many people that vote, and they vote because of who they're told to vote for, yeah. or they vote in their party. And, yeah, and, what does that mean? What does this, that even mean? In, in this area, and uh, this is mainly with a lot of the older uh, generation, they vote a straight party because that's the party their parents were in and their yeah. grandparents were in. My father-in-law was like that. He votes straight Democrat because that's what his mother that's was. That's what he is. That's yeah. That's but an he identifier. Had, they so, they do that by design too. But he but he he has no idea what the issues are. We ask you know so you know I, I get on so well, you voted for Obama. Oh, no, I didn't. I said, Obama's a Democrat. No, he's not. I said, yes, he is. So this is why... Wow, I, yeah, they'll even argue with you now because oh, they, yeah. they don't want to be attached to this. So, so you know, yeah. this is what I say. There, should, there needs to be a, a, a civics test, a, a, even a basic civics test, to so, so that you know that people have a basic understanding of who's running, what the issues are. Now, as a constable, I can attest to this. I, you know, I, I have to sit and watch everybody come through to vote. And uh, I've seen... Countless times, people come in who haven't a clue what's going on. One individual who's me mentally, uh, you know, retarded, uh, which you know I don't blame him for being retarded, but he's coming in. And he's in line. Says he was voting for Obama because that's who he was told to vote for because Obama's going to make sure that he gets what he needs. Okay, if you cannot make an informed decision, yeah, you shouldn't be. Then you vote. shouldn't be able to vote. Uh, voting, you know, I, I think our, our standards of citizenship should be changed. Citizenship should be earned, you know. You know, I'm, I'm starting to think that more and more. Um, and it shouldn't, be, yeah. it, should, it shouldn't be any requirement for money. It just should no. be a requirement for knowledge. Exactly. Just and, knowledge. Okay, and not and even, not, it, it, could even be, it could be of a 60 IQ and understand the U.S. Constitution. Right. I mean, but, 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 but more to it than that is, uh, uh, you know, under the age of 18, you know, everyone, everyone's, you know, born in this country, you're still an American, you still have other rights. But, you know, yeah. the right to vote... The right to vote should be something you earn. Yeah, should be something you earn. Yeah, and people have misused it. When you misuse... I don't. I know when, it, when a child misbehaves, you must punish a child. Correct. Well, the, this country, this vo these voters out here are misbehaving. And yes, they and are. And they are. I mean, we it, went... I don't know if you saw the guy. It was a great video where he went... Uh, it was out on the Santa Monica Pier... And he goes. Oh, I and see down. those all the time. I, I watch. And he goes and he good. tells you the the opposite opponents' points, and mm -hmm. and he goes to you and say, "Oh, you like Obama because uh, uh you know, he's anti-abortion." Or people have well, no idea. No, they don't, and they vote because of who they are told to vote, or just because it, you know it's a popular decision. After the uh, after Obama was elected the first time, uh, there was an individual they had set up, uh, you know, their camera outside of the polling area, the voting area. You know, and away from there because they couldn't be, you know, within so many no, feet so many of it. Feet, yeah. But um, they were asking people that came out, you know, who they voted for, or, you know, they were asking specific questions. And they are uh, giving statements that, you know, were basically for the opposite party and putting it on, like you just said, on their people, and they, ha they had no clue. No clue. Uh, when asked, uh, one gentleman was asked uh, which, uh, which candidate had to drop out from the presidential race due to plagiarism on his uh, speeches. That was Biden when he ran for president himself. Yes. Uh, but uh, people... Nobody you know, knows. No, and people would say it was uh, Bush. When uh, uh, when people were asked who was the candidate who uh, stated they could see Russia from uh, their front yard, uh, they automatically went to a Palin. Yeah, but that's not what she said. No, well, the thing is... Yeah. Uh, that was a Saturday Saturday Night Live actress yes. who said that. It was a psyop. Yeah, because that's and, what they do well. And uh, but you know they believe yeah. what they see on a comedy show, but when faced with the truth, they they it's they not can't just a comedy it. show. That's a whole other thing that yeah. that the American people need to need to understand about television programming. 
It's not a television show. It's a program. Yeah. And it is program. Yes, it is program. People don't understand the, the MK Ultra program they think is all cloak and dagger and, you know, uh, hiding people down in a, in a basement somewhere and sensory deprivation and stuff like that. MK Ultra is much more sinister than that because it's in our, on our faces every day. It started in the form of commercial advertising. Mm -hmm. They started honing their skills. As a matter of fact, right after the JFK shooting announcement, there was a uh, coffee commercial across the nation this went out. As they were telling you, they were telling you that it was Oswald and showing you a sketch of Oswald with a gun, a drawing. This is how gullible they were back then. Go, here's Oswald like this with the, with the rifle in his hand. And then as soon as they cut out of that, it was a it was a thing swinging in front of your face, and it was all about coffee. And then and then they even switched the pendulum to the spoon that poured the sugar, and then it, the pendulum became the spoon. People don't realize the effect that that has on on especially young impressionable minds who don't mm -hmm. know any better. Some old people can tune that out, but a young fresh mind. These have these are proven psychological techniques of brainwashing people. Yeah. You don't need drugs. Well, look, look at our, our own uh, Eric Holder right now. Obama's appointee is the uh, uh, attorney general. Uh, he said uh, years ago that we need to brainwash yes. the uh, youth. Yeah, I remember the against, statement against guns. Yes. I don't remember the exact statement. I remember what he, what you're talking about. I remember I remember it disturbed me when I found out about it because that's he should have never yeah. held a high position in law no. enforcement after uh, that uh, ever uh, again.